good afternoon friends and welcome back to this important uh, lecture series of uh, ID, uh, indian council of agriculture research uh, which is uh, icr 75 lecture series uh, as you know uh, this lecture series is one of the activities which we have started for uh, celebrating the very proud moment for every indian and that is to celebrate the uh, azadi ka amrit mahotsav that is to celebrate the india's glorious 75 years which we are going to complete on uh, 15 august 2022 uh, mr gorab uh, in this in this series uh, we have completed uh, 67 lectures by eminent personalities uh, on uh, various topics and today we have the 68th lecture in this series which will be given uh, by uh, mr gorab somansi <clears throat> friends as you are aware these lectures are now widely accepted uh, for example the last lecture which we conducted of uh, daji uh, on a very important topic uh, which was uh, krishi becoming rishi uh, has been uh, seen by 15000 viewers i could see and similarly uh, th- many other lectures and they, they are widely circulated and becomes a a course material uh, for our students as a future reference and this lecture is attended uh, by our uh, vice chancellors by our uh, senior faculty by uh, senior uh, uh, officers from indian council of agriculture research our deputy director generals and many more uh, we live stream this lecture uh, and we also have uh, two three platforms through which people see uh, this important lecture Uh, friends today's lecture is very important in the same series today is the 68th lecture on a topic called blockchain technology concept and use cases very important topic a new topic a very relevant topic for every researcher in the field of agriculture because this is the need of the hour to have this blockchain technology to help our farmers to help our agriculture system uh if uh, if you are given uh, uh, some time uh, i can just uh, uh, take a few minutes uh, to introduce mr gorab somansi who is a, a very renowned figure and, and well known personality in the field of blockchain technology a pioneer worker i can say so first of all let me thank you mr gorab uh, for accepting our invitation and to join this platform uh, to interact uh, with our faculty with our vice chancellors directors and many more persons uh, who are very keen to know about this blockchain technology uh, <clears throat> friends mr somansi is the chief executive officer and co-founder of uh, amartech innovations private limited which is incubated at iit mumbai um, this the uh, Their, their current project focuses on implementing end-to-end blockchain solutions for India's largest farmer collective, with over thirteen thousand farmers using it on daily basis. This project is winner of Indian India government's Grant Traceability Challenge and also won first prize among twenty startups in an Indo-Swiss collaborative competition held at Zurich in year two thousand twenty. Uh, mr gorab has completed post graduate from indian institute of management uh, lucknow and graduation as computer science engineer from government college aurangabad during 2017 to 19 he has worked extensively with state of chatisgarh in collaboration with many international blockchain experts to conduct the state's first pilot using the blockchain for e governance he has conducted blockchain workshops in uk europe us and in many prestigious countries uh, and places like mississippi coding academy he was selected to conduct a blockchain ground report by swiss art council in switzerland in february 2020 he is also associate editor at frontiers in blockchain journal his work has been widely uh, recognized and i want to congratulate mr gorab to you for that uh, i'll just uh, read a few uh, of the recognitions <coughs> he has been designated as a future leader by british council to present his work and idea at uk parliament and university of cambridge he was invited at prime minister us residence for the discussion 
a very proud moment and very good uh, recognition. He was selected as Dalai Lama Fellow in 2019, a fellowship which cultivates and supports a global movement of next generation leaders, applying universal values to solve global challenges, leadership, training at University of Virginia, USA. He was recognized as Fellow of Royal Academy of Engineers in UK during year 2018. He was the speaker at London Source Summit on Blockchain for Public Good. And he's a member of Africa Blockchain Alliance to collaborate and exchange ideas for implementing blockchain for public sector. Lastly, there are many recognitions, but I just want to say the, the last recognition uh, because positive of time. He was awarded also the Youth of the Year 2019 at Shahu International Film Festival at, and uh, National Film Archive of India and in Pune for his overall work. So, Hatik, congratulations to you for this great recognition, Mr. Gaurav. And uh, the platform is yours. Uh, you can please uh, apprise all of us about your work, about the issues in this uh, blockchain technologies and how best our students, our faculty can take it forward in our agricultural education system. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gaurav. And floor is yours now, please. Uh, thank you so much for this honor, uh, because to be uh, enlisted among the other names that we couldn't saw the people who have given this lecture series, it's uh, frankly speaking, it's uh, really uh, a very one of the largest honors that I've ever received. So first of all, thank you everyone for this. Uh, I'll get right to the point, uh, which is blockchain. Now, uh, imagine that this is 1990s and we are talking about what internet is. There is only to a certain limit where I, as a technology expert, could explain to you in 1990s. What and uh, one more thing, if there is any lag from my end, uh, please let me know uh, whenever it happens because there's some because of the weather, the Wi-Fi is having some issues. So we'll begin with. I always love to begin with the six laws of technology. Now, when I say technology, it means any technology, not just IT, but any kind of technology. So the first and the last law is what we'll focus at. Technology is neither good nor bad, nor is it neutral. Now, when we say nor is it neutral, it means that technology will always take sides. It will either make the powerful more powerful, which is in 99% of the cases, or it will help in more democratization of power and resources so that we live to a more fair equity future. And the last part, technology is a very human activity, and so is the history of technology. So we will briefly cover that as well. Just to give an example, in 1934 was when we discovered nuclear energy. In 1945, the first use case was actually a nuclear bomb. And 1951 was when we felt, okay, maybe we can use this not just for killing millions of people. Maybe we can harness some good energy out of it. So blockchain is like that. So do not confuse blockchain with any use cases. Bitcoin, crypto, tokens, all of these are different uses of blockchain, like nuclear energy, nuclear bomb. But the, the core fission part, like what is the atom, that is what we will try to understand over here. I'll just skip through these parts, the, because Sir has already covered it. Uh, over here, the government, of, these are the different implementations happening within the government, the different states. And uh, over the Chhattisgarh one was where I had worked, creating a proof of concept for identity management. Uh, and I'm not sure how many people are Marathi. I'm also translating it in English, but uh, the entire book is written on uh, beginning writing right from 14th century onwards till blockchain. Yeah, I just want to cover the main points really, very, really well. That's why you might feel that I might uh, skip some slides. So what we are going through is an opportunity which was simply not present before. Before internet, did you have an option of instant data sharing? of communication or even this video call, the video lecture that you are having right now, of course not. So similarly, some new properties are being introduced by blockchain, which were not possible before it. That is the crux of the matter, right? Now, very briefly, I, I don't endorse crypto or Bitcoin, but the thing is, that is how the it, it all began. That is why if you don't understand the history, the concepts, Opinions will come later. First, we'll try to understand exactly what it is so that we can apply our own minds to see how we can refurbish it for our own purposes, right? Now, there are different ways to understand. The first and the most simple way to understand is I love to explain with an analogy. 
So imagine at the most high, we'll compare a phone and a blockchain. At the highest level of abstraction, you just have a phone network. If within that, you have SIM cards, people, and uh, mobile phones, bandwidth, so on and everything. There is nothing specific. It's just a concept. Similarly, blockchain is also an abstraction. Even before it becomes a technology, it is just an abstraction. Now, let us go one level deeper. Let us talk about a specific phone network. Uh, let's say I'm saying Vodafone. The moment I use the word Vodafone, now I'm talking about a specific geography, region, people, and customization, and so on. Similarly, there is one way of saying that Bitcoin is a currency is a different and Bitcoin is a blockchain. The moment I say Bitcoin protocol, it means the Bitcoin blockchain. It's a specific type of one of the many thousands and thousands of blockchain. It's customized to a certain extent. But does it become a currency right away? Of course not. Again, go back to the phone example. Now I can use Vodafone for many purposes. I can use Vodafone for calling someone, uh, SMS, WhatsApp. But let us say I say that I'm going to use Vodafone only and only for calling and no other purpose. That is when similarly, I'm saying that this Bitcoin protocol, people are collectively deciding it's a human decision to use it as a currency. That is what makes it a currency. Or you could use Bitcoin protocol for tracking diamonds also, which we'll see later on. So the decision is what makes it a currency. The technology is just a way of how different data is stored. So that is the difference primarily. Now we will slightly have a detour in history. Now blockchain as a technology, people feel that it is the most uh, state of the art in computer science. It is, but it has nothing to do with computer science when it comes to the history. Historically, it has everything to do only and only with accounting. Now, of course, uh, sorry for the image because accounting might be really interesting for other people also. But let us talk about what is the simplest form of accounting. The simplest form of accounting is single entry accounting. So the earliest example of single entry accounting goes back 5000 years. So very short, it is not, not at all different from, you know, uh, during our childhood when our parents used to give us a small piece of paper and with line items regarding what items to bring from a grocery. That piece of paper is single entry accounting. There's nothing complex about it. But if it seems too simple, please understand that until 14th century, all the wars that were fought, all the pyramids, forts that were built, were, this was the only way of actually keeping a tab on it. Then something happened in 14th century, 14 to 15th century. This person came into the picture. Now, we, most people don't know this person. And even I didn't until I started understanding the history of it. We all have heard of Leonardo da Vinci. So Leonardo da Vinci, his mathematics teacher is Father Le Capuchin. He is the mathematics teacher who taught him. So Father Le Capuchin felt a very simple thing. He realized that if everyone is maintaining single entry accounting, it is going to get so complex to do trade. How will you have barter? There should be some way to at least keep a record of your assets and liabilities. In fact, the word credit debit expenses in uh, liabilities and uh, expendables, all of the a balance sheet, for example, these are the entire system was introduced by Father Luca Pacioli. And what it is called, it's called double entry bookkeeping. Wherever you are debiting an account, you credit an account, and hence you are balancing everything, hence it's a balance sheet. This is the, and the people who have started doing balance sheets, for example, uh, in Italy, on the banks of rivers, uh, there, were, there were benches. On these benches, people used to sit and they, they, were, they were middlemen, basically community of Ashkenazi Jews, who decided that we are going to make ourselves prosper by just doing this work, by maintaining other people's double entry accounting, so that trade could be facilitated. So as this community of Ashkenazi Jews used to sit on benches. People used to come to them uh, to do trade, to manage their books and their accounting. And they used to get a small commission for it. Then they started lending also and started gaining an interest on it. Slowly, the benches on which these people used to sit became buildings, buildings became organizations, but the name is the same. The Italian word for bench is banca, and hence the name for the word is banks. So banks is what they do with double entry bookkeeping with the added flavor of lending added to it. But what happened, there was a small problem. Small problem in the sense you must have heard what Enron did or Satyam did, all of these big scams. How did these big scams happen? I just cook up my profits and I misled the investors by saying that I have so much or so much amount of money. 
and that is what people did not like so there was an idea which came even before the internet in 1989 the youngest chartered accountant of japan yuri ijiri he said what if instead of everyone maintaining their own separate double books lal kitab and all what if there is just sharing it's a thought experiment that he did that there is a layer of a uh, platform which envelops the entire earth and there is only one property to it the property is that once data goes into it you can change or delete it that is the only property and what if everyone is doing their bookkeeping into this common layer so i as a company will i ever be able to do any fraud because all of my entries are linked with everyone else's entries even if i am doing to cash transactions my record keeping has to be in line with everyone else's entries because that record book that layer is common and that is the first word for blockchain although the word blockchain came in 2008 as an idea it first came into existence in 1989 that what if there is a platform in which once data goes you can't change or delete that data and you don't need to trust any third person to have that uh, trust over it now fast forward to 2008 there was an economic depression and since 1992 there was a movement called cypherpunk movement and cypherpunk movement gave the world two superstars one of them is satoshi nakamoto the person who gave us the words bitcoin blockchain and the technology and that person is anonymous uh, we don't even know whether it's a uh, the gender of the person nationality ethnicity or whether even it's a single person or a group of persons we don't have no idea but still that name is famous satoshi nakamoto and the another person who became a superstar of the cypherpunk movement was julian assange of wikileaks in fact julian assange even wrote an entire book in 2012 on it now cypherpunk movement began in 1992 with the thought that if internet is going to become very big then if we don't have proper cryptographic protocols in place then our privacy will be breached the big companies or the governments will be able to access all of our private messages all of our private data manipulators through that so how can we ensure that so most quite a lot of contribution when it comes to if your passwords are safe today or if you have any kind of privacy we have a lot of that uh, debt to to the cypherpunk movement now within that cypherpunk movement there was a community who felt wait why even have uh, because there was a continuous cyclical depressions which were happening in us and that was happening because banks were giving money to bad uh, or you could say completely are uh, irresponsible people but the banks were not giving their own money the banks were giving money away of the people so and there was no transparency regarding where this money goes and then this idea came from the cypherpunk movement can we just have a currency without with complete transparency and no dependency on any third party and that is what gave birth to this paper it is hardly 15 16 pages of paper it came out in august 2008 the words bitcoin and blockchain have been used for the first time ever in this paper by satoshi nakamoto and 2008 the economy went down people lost faith in wall street and the banks 2008 this paper comes side by side and suddenly people have an alternative and that is why it got a boost because that history is important why bitcoin there were attempts to do something like bitcoin since 1992 there was bit gold there was hash cash there was digi cash there are at least a dozen similar attempts it is not something new people have been trying to do it it is just that bitcoin came up with a new technology called blockchain to do that now just notice the title peer to peer cash system if i am sending you a song by bluetooth that is peer to peer my mobile is sending directly to your mobile without any third party server here peer to peer cash means what you are bypassing everything you are bypassing borders governments banks courts everything you are making cash democratic another way to understand is if internet is a country let us say uh, just like india australia us these are countries imagine for a second if internet is a country then that country has everything except its own currency so that is what it also is but internet does not have a government internet does not have a leader internet does not have anything so that that's why it's peer to peer internet is mostly peer to peer hence a peer to peer cash system means a currency for the internet that is the extent of the revolutionary ambition that these people had and uh, just uh, to kind of explain it gave birth to a phenomena called bitcoin millionaires because then people suddenly jumped into bitcoin so much that 
without understanding why even to get investment into it or what does it do people just wanted to become rich for example i met mr ar bhandari he was hardly 11 12 years old when by mistake he bought bitcoins and suddenly after 5 years he was worth uh, he was just a millionaire and this phenomena is actually what misleads us regarding what blockchain is supposed to do because this has nothing to do with blockchain it is entirely market sentiments nothing to do with technology now we will go another way to understand is the technical way right now i will require you require your attention for the next 15 minutes in such a way that we will encounter one problem one solution one problem one solution we will combine those four solutions and then you will have bitcoin in front of you now there are no metaphors analogies all of that is out of the way now we are deep diving into technology but we will try to make the problem solvable now how many people are there on earth 7 8 billion people uh, as if all of them are in internet then all of them should have their own currency uh, their own currency i mean to some common currency if that is your ambition let us try to make it smaller let us say can we have a technology just between four people alice bob charlie and dylan in computer science we use them as a b c d hence alice bob charlie dylan imagine can we have a completely autonomous system between these four people using technology if it works for four people it will work for seven and a half and eight billion people also that is the assumption now imagine alice bob charlie and dylan got admission in a college but they did not get the hostel so now they are living in a flat and when they are living in a flat they are strangers when i say strangers it means that you don't have any reason to trust each other but at the same time you have to do daily transactions maid bill electricity bill groceries bill and so on and they want to make it more streamlined how do i make this different expenses more streamlined that is the problem statement now let us begin with the first solution the first solution is at least something the record has to be kept so they decide that the first concept is a ledger a ledger is a fancy word for a database nothing more now they say that let us have a ledger in which we are just going to keep our records just one more thing uh, what happens is in any, any field the more and more uh, technology uh, the some words become popular the experts within the field come up with new jargon so that their expertise remains untouched so the new word for blockchain technology is now dis distributed decentralized ledger that is what now everyone calls it so i'll just cover it with just one second i'll just take a pause from this example blockchain is also called distributed decentralized ledger distributed means something which is present in physically multiple locations at the same time nothing more than that decentralized means there is not a single person or authority or group of people who control what happens everything happens in a democratic way and ledger as i said is just a database decentralized distributed ledger that's the another word for blockchain getting back to the example so the problem statement is how do we keep a record of our monthly kharcha pani so how do they start they said that first we will need a common portal on which we'll make our entry so how does it look like it looks like alice pays bob 100 rupees bob pays charlie 40 rupees and so on now we will assume the existence of mistakes or mischief the first, let us say charlie is a very mischievous person now what charlie will do charlie will start putting in random entries that alice paid bob uh, 5 lakh rupees charlie paid dylan 2 rupees any random entries how do we stop that the second solution that we will use is something that most of us are familiar with digital signature digital signature you must have already seen you must have already own, uh, owning it also the only difference between a digital signature and a physical signature is that a physical signature only validates the identity of the person a digital signature validates the identity plus the content at which point in time it was signed that is also authenticated if there is any change in the content after it is digitally signed the digital is the digital signature doesn't hold true give a simple example you must have seen bollywood movies in which uh, the father says that uh, because his daughter is marrying a poor person he says that ye blank check le lo take this blank check and uh, go away now you can't sign a blank check digitally you can only sign it physically why because that blank is also getting authenticated by the digital signature after that if anyone tries to put in any number on it that number is not valid because the digital signature is now corrupted so the second concept that they use is 
every entry that you see over here in front of you, Alice pays about 100 rupees. Everyone has to digitally sign it by their own digital key. Now, that at least solves the problem of putting random entries. No one can put other uh, wrong entries. But Charlie is very mischievous. Char what Charlie does, now look at the first line. Alice pays Bob 100 rupees. Earlier it was not digitally signed. Now it is digitally signed. What Charlie does is, he takes the entire digitally signed message, copy pastes it. Because a copy of a valid message is also a valid message. You can copy paste valid, valid message as many number of times. So Charlie uh, pastes it five, uh, 20 times. How do we stop that from happening? So the third concept is very much simple. We just add a serial number to every transaction. So just by adding a serial number, now notice we have only added a serial number over here. What we've done is we have made, you now we are going to sign the entire line, one dot Alice space of 100 rupees. If someone tries to make a copy of it, the serial number will also be copied and it will not make any sense because serial number by definition have to be unique and that is how you catch the fraud, right? Now the fourth problem is Charlie is, as I said, very mischievous. Charlie says that I don't want to give any money. Then I need you pay at the end of the month. Now it's a very physical problem. It's nothing to do with technology. So how do you solve it? Charlie, because on the technology, it says that Charlie is supposed to pay at the end of the month 500 rupees. How do we actually solve that? So that is simply done by putting some money at the beginning of the pot. So whenever you're beginning the month, you have to put the money in a common pot and the ledger will keep a track of, it's like a prepaid mobile, nothing more. It's like a bank only. You can't withdraw more money than you already have. Similarly, you can't make entries into this common ledger more than you have already earned. Now, before we go into the blockchain part of it, just conceptually, I wanted to just pause and imagine for a while. That imagine instead of this four people are having this ledger, let us say all the people's people on this planet have a smartphone. And let us say that everyone is maintaining their account into a common ledger. So what will happen is uh, on first I will get a salary. So my I will not get any cash. Let us say only my account is going up. I go to buy vegetables. My account will go down and the, uh, the vegetable seller's account will go up. And similarly, that is the only thing that will happen. If this is the case, do you ever need to print any money? Because that is what money is. It's a symbol for a value, which is also what is written on your notes. It's a promise, promissory note. It's a promise. And that promise is with respect to a certain value. And that value is not generated by something in, in its backing, but basically by the entire economy and the supply and demand against which the currency stands. But that is all it is. So first we understand currency. Now we will go do, go do a very deep dive into the technology. Abhi thoda sa simple wale concepts will tackle. We all know before we understand what is SHA-256, it might look very fancy. It just means secure hashing algorithm 256 bits, nothing more. Now, before we go into hashing, what we will go understand encryption. Encryption, everyone must have heard it. Now, encryption, ka opposite word ka, what is the opposite word for encryption? Decryption. Because you can unlock the message and you can lock the message. The moment you lock the message, it looks like garbage. And only the person with the key can unlock it and see it. There is hashing is only a one-way street. You cannot have a de-hashing. Once something is hashed, it only you can only remain the hash. There is no going back. So why it is even used? Actually, this is what hashing looks like. And this is the fundamental aspect of blockchain. Hashing is the technology on which the entire blockchains are built. Now, this is the input, Sanya. Hashing is nothing more than an algorithm. Once I put that in an algorithm, an hashing algorithm, I will get a certain output. Can you see the output? C7549. It's random. It has a fixed length. But when I say random, it means that for Sanya, it will always give, in lower case, it will always give this particular output. Now look at Sanya in capital. The, I have only changed the caps lock and immediately the hash output has changed. Now I'm keeping only first look at the last row. Only the S is capital. Immediately everything is changed. So what are the properties that you I want you to remember? The property is, you can, if I only give you the hash and I don't give you the input, there is no way to go back. Then why do we even use it? What is the use of this? 
any good web developer, any good blue computer developer, if they are creating a website or a portal and there is a login for it for users, everyone's passwords are only stored in the hashed format. Mark Zuckerberg can't see your password. Google can't see your password. Your online banking can't see your password because they are only storing the hash of the password. Now imagine when you are doing online net banking, browser pay on the browser you just put your password right. Let us say it is uh, ten characters. It is it looks like star 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 asterisk. The moment you click on enter, suddenly it becomes very big. What happens when it becomes big? Your browser is converting into a hash. The hash is getting matched because if I am a developer and I can see your password, then I can hack you. But as a developer, I can only see the hashes, and the hash is what gets matched. The only way to figure out what is the input is you have to begin with every input in the world: zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, A, B, C, D. And when you arrive after millions and millions of tries at Sanya, S A N Y A, lower case, this is and the hash output matches. Then you will know that okay, this is the input. It's very fundamental property. That's why I'm spending I'm spending time on this. Now we are going to solve a puzzle. This is called an hashing puzzle, and I'll tell you its purpose. This puzzle is being played every ten minutes since third January two thousand nine. Since this session began, I want to call it a lecture because all of you are much more qualified and better than me. So it's just a sharing session. Since this sharing session has began, already this puzzle has been played three four times because it is played every ten minutes, non-stop. That is the only way Bitcoin actually are getting generated. What happens? What is the puzzle? Let the puzzle is I am going to give you content one and content two. I am the puzzle master. All of you who are watching this sharing session, you are just uh, the players, and I am the puzzle master. And I am saying that I want a hash output in such a way that the first four digits should be zero. I don't care what the other digits are. For example, over here, instead of the look at the first row, instead of C seven five four. I want zero zero zero. I don't care what the rest of it is. But then your first question should be: every output, every input has a fixed output. Fixed output in the sense that is the only output that will come again. It's in the how can I have a customized uh, output, or if I am the one who is giving input. So here the answer is: you can add your own input to it. So even though I am giving you content one and content two, all of you who are playing the puzzle, you get your own number. Nonce number it is called. What is the nonce number? Nonce number is just zero, one, two, three, four, five. You you try it every time. You take content one, content two. You attach zero to it, and then you do put it through algorithm. You see whether the first four digits of the hash output are zero or not. If not, you try with two, three, four, five, and so on. The moment one of you gets a number which, when attached to the content which I have given you, in and If the first four digits looks like zero, that is when you win the game. Just remember this. Now keep it in your mind aside. Now what we are going to do is we are directly going to draw blocks and chains. In fact, the original word was never blockchain. The person who actually gave blockchain to us used it as two separate words: block, space, chain. It was the other people who came later, like me, who made it into a fa fancy thing. Okay. just we are going to combine what you have already learned nothing more the first concept that we are going to use is serial number block number 1 in bitcoin the serial number is time at what time do these thing happen because time also acts like a unique serial key right but let us call it block number 1 then what happens every 10 minutes no matter what transactions are happening in the play in the world Australia से लेके जापान तक पांच बिटकॉइन गए इंडिया से लेके स्विट्जरलैंड तक दस बिटकॉइन गए ऑल ऑफ दिस डेटा दिस इज द डेटा विच यू डोंट कंट्रोल दिस इज द डेटा विच इज हैपनिंग इन एनी केस हाउ द ट्रांजेक्शन शुड बी हैपनिंग ऑल ऑफ दिस ट्रांजेक्शन विच आर हैपनिंग सिंस द टेन मिनिट्स आर कलेक्टेड टूगेदर वन मोर डेटा इज एडेड टू इट विच इन दिस केस इज ब्लैंक बिकॉज दिस इज द फर्स्ट ब्लॉक विच इज वी कॉल्ड Previous hash. This is the genesis block, the first block. Now what happens is everyone in the world. This is your content one, content two, content three. Now everyone in the world tries to find out 
what is the number which when added to the above, above content and once we do hash of it we will get the first four digits at zero let us say some computer gets finds the number now this is the number seven six five four seven why is this number special because this number when i to all the data gives you an output in which the first four digits are zero now i'm not writing all the 256 digits i'm only writing the first four this is a bit like playing sudoku or crossword in sudoku is very difficult to play but once someone has actually solved it it is very easy to verify similarly once someone has found out the nonce number uh, computer computationally speaking they will raise their hand and the moment 51 percent people check it and say yes actually this person has actually found out the right number he is right and then that is how that is the first moment when everyone takes that nonce number accepts it and creates a block it is not a chain yet it is only a block the moment a block is created the person who has found the nonce number will be rewarded in bitcoins where will these bitcoins come from so the total number of bitcoins in the world is 2.1 crore 21 million and it is kept in a mathematical mountain no one owns that mountain it's just an algorithm and from that mountain the people will get a reward hence the word mining this is this process is called mining because i am digging from a mathematical mountain now what will happen now there will be next 10 minutes in the next 10 minutes there will be a new time or a block number all there will be new transactions happening all over the world but now what i will do is i will take the output of the previous block as an input for the current block and this entire data will be broadcasted throughout the moment it is broadcasted everyone is trying to find out what is the nonce number what is the nonce number someone finds out the nonce number they raise their hand and now i have a block hash and this is the first block chain similarly repeating over here why to have this what is the purpose of this so imagine that this is not block number one two three imagine this is block number 501 502 503 and, and it goes till 2000 now if any person comes in the middle block and they try to delete that data a paid c 60 let us say someone tries to change it edit it or delete it the moment any tampering happens that nonce number below it one two three four three three four seven becomes meaningless because the block hash will immediately change the moment i'm changing the data immediately the next block will also change because i'm using the output of the previous block as input for the next block immediately next will also change and then image the whole chain all the blocks from block number 2000 till block number 503 will point out to block number 502 that there is some tampering over here and immediately it will reverse back it will not accept the hack and it will mathematically heal itself and that is the whole concept of it now this blockchain today it is so ver verified uh, there are so many variants of it but the fundamental remains the same there might not be even nonce numbers in some cases there might not be mining in some cases but the fundamental aspect is if data is mathematically stored in such a format that changing it becomes impossible then what can you do on top of it and that now we'll jump to the use cases soon this is an image taken from textbooks but i realized that the textbook image doesn't make any sense even if i understand blockchain it is very difficult to understand that so just to put in and this is the image that i had done as a comparison now what happened in 2012 and 11 people realized wait a minute this is just a way of building trust now what if we take the same technology and pull it in different ways let us say i don't want this uh, database to have more energy wastage so they just made changes to it and we had different blockchains they wanted more transactions they wanted more features and that is how it began so the first use case is like a nuclear bomb but then people realize wait we can make nuclear energy also out of it as i explained in the first example now today we are at a stage when there are so many different types of blockchains which are specific to the different purposes for example india completely hates cryptocurrency but at the same time rbi is working with its own blockchain in which they are trying to do interbank settlements in real time because that has nothing to do with crypto, whatever RBI is doing. They are using only a few properties of blockchain, which ensures that trust and real-time data sharing happens in such a way that authority need not be a middleman. So 
the use cases is where I want to focus now. In fact, the I have to use this code using if just try to imagine if trust is something which is automated, then what will happen? Uh, Vitalik Buterin ka quote hai, it's very important. I'm, I'll just try to say it in my own words. He says that ask the Joby technology to know all the technologies that have come until today. They have tried to remove the lower must person from the job. You brought in uh, assembly line, factory worker ki nokri chali gi. You brought in tractors, landless laborers ke uh, nokri, uh, farm labor ki nokri kam ho gi. Uh, you get in driverless vehicles, drivers ki nokri chali jai gi. That's okay. That's what technology does because then the people can work in something else and we can move towards a common efficiency. Blockchain is also here to make people jobless. But blockchain is here to make the CEOs and the board of management jobless. As, the, as he puts it in an example, everything that Uber does, Facebook does, YouTube does, they are nothing but aggregators. They are not generating value of their own in a direct way. They are connecting the supply and demand. But if that middleman itself goes out of the way, then Puri Uber company becomes jobless and the blockchain, open source blockchain platform is where people can do their own transactions. And this is actually what has happened with also 2016, a person named David Williams, a Uber driver, he was also a computer developer. He left his job, built open source platform, and there is no middleman in it. There is no Uber. So we have a WhatsApp message. The subsidy real estate company Airbnb, but it doesn't have in its uh, its own real estate. The largest cab company is Uber, it doesn't have anything. Facebook may Mark Zuckerberg does not create any content. You are the people who create content on Facebook, but Mark Zuckerberg becomes rich. You are the people who are doing the uh, value creation for advertisement. So this is the larger fundamental change which blockchain is supposed to bring. And we'll also see, for example, civil scores. Uh, after the diamond one, we'll focus on the civil score one. Why to have a civil score? Because uh, civil score dependency, because most of our farmers don't even have a civil score. And that is where trust again, and what I'll, I'm getting ahead, we'll tackle one use case by use case. So blood diamond industry, we all know blood diamond again to just to, uh, for those who don't know, the diamonds which are unethically sourced from the mining farms, uh, from the mines of uh, Kimberley and South Africa and other African countries in which they use labor, terrorism, violence and exploitation. And then it is sold in the Western countries that exploitation is basically blood diamonds. Now there has been attempts to stop this. So first in 1998, Kimberley protocol was set up among 83 countries. India, India ke foreign minister bhi pe ja ke sign kar ke aate, that we will follow this protocol perfectly. Did anything happen to the blood diamond industry? Absolutely nothing because people can just something exist on protocol doesn't mean it will be followed. Then people realize let us make everything digital. 2004 2012-13 they tried to make the protocol a digital one by giving them modules did it change the industry it did not because you can do any data tampering in digital 2014 a revolutionary lady came to the picture called Leanne Kemp and her startup was called ever ledger ever because diamonds are forever ledger because it's a fancy word for blockchain these days ever ledger and ever ledger what they did was they started putting all the critical information from every point onto a blockchain. So once you scan the QR code at the end of every diamond, this is what you see. Now they are recording all the physical dimensions of the diamond in, in place also. They are recording who is doing the cutting, architecturing, laser cutting, crafting, grooming, all of these activities are recorded on the spot so that if anyone is trying to put in some blood diamonds into the value chain, it doesn't work. And this is actually proving out to be pretty big right now. Along with this, one more thing happened. Even the stolen diamonds became difficult to resell because all the people have to do is just take a physical image of the diamonds that someone is trying to sell me as a retailer. And I, immediately those physical details will be digitized and they will be matched with some data stored on the blockchain. And I will know that this diamond is already reported as stolen. So this has also happened in this case. Now, in supply chains, especially, that's where blockchains really come to power. But rather than just reading you bullet point by bullet point, I'll try to uh, make it more specific to examples. 
this is just important to understand because now we are moving towards industry 4.0 now industry 4.0 will have so many smart solutions but look at the fundamental look at the bottom the foundation is same why because if you don't have trusted data how will you have smart solutions built on fraud data that is the whole logic of it now within agriculture i will cover the use cases for the next 5 minutes in detail traceability for example is where we started working with uh, sayadri farms mr vilash sindhi sir mr abba saheb kai sir and over there along with traceability we realize other side use cases also which i'll explore traceability we all know crop insurance is one of the largest uh, aspects an explored one in which blockchain has to come into picture so mr parmaker sir from sensor tech has this very cheap agriculture sensors. they they record the data Speak to it. There is agronomy, but what if we are keeping recording this data uh, um, onto a blockchain, and suddenly we have a market open for private insurance for plot specifics, even parametric in, in insurance which are event driven. Those events can be coded onto directly blockchain smart contracts. Smart contract is just a way where you can have transparency in execution of certain agreement. Now. for example this is the project that we did uh, for over two and a half years it ran between 2019 until uh, just in, uh, to uh, last until last month so every qr code that we are printing on fruits and vegetables from sayadri farms once you scan the qr code you can see the entire information regarding who's the farmer and in the entire journey if there are any food certifications like uh, global gap fair trade rainforest alliance or the certifications were visible and you could also see the price margins because all the payments through the farmer producer company were happening digitally there was integration done with the payment systems and the erp system also which ensures that the price break up is possible right now the live project that is happening is with fsgil in uh, sayadri farm sustainable grassroots initiative as the prime client in which the blockchain partners so the entire value right from the farmers journey spinning knitting dyeing fabric is the data is being collected and it is stored on blockchain in such a way that so this is the ru brand facility in nashik you can visit it any time by mr abba saheb kare is now heading it and these are my developers uh, from emertech and we are printing qr codes on every t-shirt so once you scan the t-shirt the qr code present on the t-shirts you can see who are the farmers the price transparency aspect of it that is in progress where we are working towards that you should be able to see if you are buying a t-shirt for 800 rupees how much of that is going to the farmers over here farmer specific traceability is not possible it is only a batch wise traceability because the mix is getting it's getting mixed at every point so we are able to show the group of farmers in this case now just go one step ahead and this is a company this is my ambition in fact and uh, if anyone right now is actually keen to do it this is what i would like to replicate Uh, Hara is a company based out of Indonesia, and uh, its uh, founders are have been my mentors in the past. Now, what Hara has done is, Hara is doing data collection for all the small land holding farmers of Indonesia, and they are incentivizing people, volunteers, to capture the data. Once you are captured, they are crowdsourcing the data. Now, the more authentic my data is, the more I will be rewarded in Hara tokens. And who will? Why will this actually work? because who will actually pay for it now look at the right most column data buyers the seat now this is a very important model for all of us to understand because this has a potential for bypassing the civil scores now banks need more and more markets but banks don't have data for it hence banks have a civil score in us they have fico scores and so on if we can have some way of validating the income source of a farmer then that income source itself could become uh, income source as well as expenses then that date, that information can itself become a way for banks to start lending into it so that the informal economy does not have to face the unfair extremely high interest rates and hara has actually done it it's a successful thing they have 200 developers and as i said the cto of amazon has visited them and done a wonderful documentary on them this is what we need in india in fact we need it for anyone in the informal economy like rack pickers and that that also i'll explain in a while 
now because i wanted to focus more on the use cases in agriculture in fact there are used so many hundreds of use cases that i can also cover in regardless of the domain uh, so dr sunil and me were having a discussion regarding the genomic data for the different plant varieties for example this is a wonderful paper that you can read to understand how they are actually using blockchain to have decentralized data sharing and a trusted model for uh, the genome aspect of it you can take a screenshot of this uh block as i as i said the use cases in agriculture are more towards efficiency when it comes to multiple strangers involving with each other it has to do with trust and then how do you sell the trust what do i mean by selling the trust you can use the trust as a branding power to attract market premium you can use the trust to build credit scores for the farmers so that they can apply for even education loan car loan bike loan and so on and others you can use blockchain over here for integrating with your iot sensors so that the climate data can be validated by the insurers and the reinsurer companies so that they can also jump into the picture you can the most important use case is i'm working with this wonderful person called josh nor uh, from a company called reseed you know, in us so josh what is doing he was also a part of the barack obama council josh is now collecting the carbon data by looking at the biodiversity and regenerative farming practices of the farmers in uh, north america and south america josh is collecting that data in such a way that the farmers who are using the good practices their efforts will be validated because the carbon tokens will be created and those carbon tokens will be sold as a in a pilot itself he was able to double the income directly so a farmer was able to earn 20000 dollars uh, i think in south america just by putting in the carbon data on blockchain and then selling that carbon data in the markets in the voluntary markets not the uh, traditional markets 20000 additional dollars were generated so that's another wonderful use case it's all about understanding what this technology provides and then it is the domain experts who should be actually coming forth and doing these use cases now we are also trying to do a small pilot for the rag pickers because our office is in cbd belapur and just nearby we have the india's largest plastic recycling people so the rag pickers don't have a smartphone so we have just given them an id card with a qr code on top of it now from every point in the value chain like the, when the when the rag picker goes to a scrap dealer their qr code will be scanned their quantity will be recorded and then it will move on so hopefully it's just a pilot it's very ambitious hopefully we will be able to build digital profiles of the rack pickers and so that their efforts could be quantified that quantification of their efforts hopefully could result into maybe better employment opportunities or maybe their credit scores but you can't do anything if something is not digitized right so i think uh, i'm sorry about exceeding my time because i wanted to give some time for q and a also so i'll just we can go to q and a now yeah uh no if you, if you have uh, something more to explain you can take another 5 minutes there's no problem okay thank you sir please please uh do you want me to explain the uh, no what i'll do is i'll take it on the request basis like any part that or a domain that, uh, that people that, want that will to take, take up but still uh, if you have uh, some more slides you can explain okay Okay. yeah you you work with chatisgarh government uh, would be very attractive to everybody okay if it's here right here yeah yes it's here so, uh currently i'll just work uh, talk about my chatisgarh government case also so uh the, in terms of policy the so one and only state which has its own blockchain policy is tamil nadu it is based upon the national strategy on chain which was released by niti ayog in 2018 and just two months ago we now have a national strategy on blockchain released by the ministry of electronics and it these are the three foundational documents based on which hopefully people will follow whatever tamil nadu is doing in which every state is having its blockchain policy with support for implementation and uh, how can we go ahead for example the way that i did it in chatisgarh was primarily because just by understanding that now i was uh, it's kind of a long use case so i'll try to make it shorter the whole problem statement was there were so many people uh, affected by inefficiency in direct benefit transfers dbt 
that was happening because there were so many different schemes run by individual different departments who were not sharing data with each other so as a pilot we felt why not just have a way of connecting some way for example labor department is going to the field collecting data that data should be shared by the health department also but while that sharing is happening what if there is a breach in privacy because some data which is open to health department should not be open to let's say labor department so that's a catch so, and in order to do that the first idea was and i had an example in front of me frankly i had an example of a country called estonia estonia has done something which is so remarkable that barack obama has said that the most digitally advanced country in the world is estonia the europe us uh, australia uk no one comes close to what estonia has done so before telling what i did i'll just uh, talk in the, uh, briefly what they did in 2012 estonia connected all of their government departments with each other on a blockchain platform then a few years later they connected the public sector and private sector on the blockchain platform so that your taxes became immediate your tax filing was became transparent and so on two years ago estonia created a blockchain platform to share data with another country with finland so right now the the thing is you can apply for a citizenship in estonia without going to estonia go on their website become a e citizen collect your visa e visa from delhi and using that you can open up a business in estonia again you don't have to visit estonia i myself am a part of a blockchain based think tank which is based out of estonia but i have never have to go to estonia all of this services and transparency is possible because they have put nearly everything on blockchain even the high officials the ministers over there when they are giving speeches the speeches are getting recorded on the blockchain platform so that after 10 years if something gets floated uh, some tampering is done that you can uh, that can't actually be simply ver- ver- verified by going on to their website and checking but i was in chatisgarh and chatisgarh in 2017 even bitcoin was not popular so how do i actually go ahead and do it i'll just try to focus on the main aspect of it that how much networking collaboration and cross interdisciplinary support is needed over here that is the mo- crux of this pa- the only lesson from this so what i did was i started spamming people when i was working in chatisgarh for example dr jane thompson at that time she was writing very extensively in uh, blockchain although her company was in the real estate and she was a multi millionaire back then and you can see the message that i have sent her on 6 september 2017 i have an idea but then i said jane if uh, people don't take me much seriously you know in chatisgarh uh, she said what if i come to chatisgarh and i give presentation from australia i said jane i can't even pay for your cab expense but jane immediately next week she was in chatisgarh in raipur and then jane gave presentations on on my behalf and she was just wonderful and that gives a boost to the pilots and experiments similarly when i needed more help in terms of how documentation should happen technology and policy should happen i reached out to professor edgar whitley now these are all pers- screenshots from the personal messages on 5th may 2017 i reached out to professor edgar whitley uh he had published a lot of research papers and i read all of them regarding how technology policy and emerging markets should uh, work together and for the next entire year he was guiding me so wonderfully that it helped me a lot to do the policy making and uh, sop drafting in a good way so when i was invited to london i just uh, asked professor edgar can we just meet for a coffee because one of the reasons that i am here is because of the support that you had given me he invited me over uh, back to london uh, for a workshop at the london school of economics so that was wonderful similarly the first blockchain hackathon that happened uh, sponsored by a government happened in chatisgarh not in tamil nadu karnataka andhra pradesh maharashtra up delhi no it happened in chatisgarh because uh, for john view level is the winner of the world's world's first blockchain hackathon it is london blockchain hackathon and she got quite a lot of uh, cash prize over there so i asked john weave if uh, she can be an online jury for a blockchain hackathon that we are conducting and then she said uh, not just a jury i'll just come over and she came to chatisgarh we got more than 130 startups participating into the blockchain hackathon and that was a wonderful experience similarly for land records i worked extensively because land records and blockchain have a much more solid and proven use case uh hernando de soto is the name of the person that i wanted to go ahead and just google out 
this again ha- happened because i was spamming people networking with them trying to work together and then that is how the whole uh, picture actually came into the being again i'm sorry i'd like to focus on the qna because i know that the qna will be extensive and this project it was a, later on uh, got uh, funding by the world bank also to but that's another government thing i think people are more focusing on the supply chain part so i'll focus over there yeah excellent um, so uh, we can uh, mr gora we can take a few questions yes yes yeah so one uh, uh, question uh, under this q and a is uh, do you know any institution which is working on the carbon credits for the farmers yes uh, reseed the name that i mentioned by josh nor and we are partnering with them to become their asia partner because they are focused on america okay uh then uh, there is another question by uh, dr narsi and the question is what resources are needed for implementation of the blockchain for example traceability uh, in banana supply chain uh, okay and uh, what are the levels of uh, cost uh, which is involved in this okay uh, i'll give an example so there is this wonderful uh, startup called hani veda Uh, supported by pusha krishi also uh, by hardik joshi in which uh, what he st- he has his own organic honey chain across uh, somnath uttarakhand and uh, two other places and rajasthan also so basically he is a big uh, in- into the honey business now if you want to give traceability over there my personal experience i'll share if traceability is your end goal then it doesn't happen Uh, because you can't keep traceability that you can't ask people on the uh, shop floor on the on the field that do this extra activity because you want traceability that's not how it works the way that it should work is and that is why some of the blockchain platforms are like this is our software uh, start uh, using it on your own and paying us a monthly fees and that's a fail model that is why walmart nestle ibm uh, did not really launch as it should have been the way that it should work is you should digitize the value chain and provide value to the people who are working there for example people need to manage their inventory let people manage their inventory so we uh, what we have done in our startup is we have built an erp software called agrotrust invento it it's a very cheaper version in which you can manage your inventory then you can then let's say there is a person who needs to print labels for the sku all you have to do is use the sku label printer connect it with your inventory so that the inventory is getting auto adjusted based on the number of labels you are printing and so on similarly everything is again linked with your who's the farmer or the bee keeper in this sense and if there is a digitization then is it actually providing you some value there should be a value to using the digital modules on a daily basis and traceability should be a by product of this daily digitized operations so that this project does not remain as a one time uh, fancy pilot thing so that is my experience is that you have to become specific to the domain you have to understand what is this that this person needs build that and just use the data for that for linking it with traceability while doing this if you are doing it on blockchain to get back to the question the costing ideally should be the same as it would be if you are just using it without blockchain because the only reason that the cost is high today frankly is because of there's a lack of developers but that's only a temporary scenario because now it's getting introduced into universities also i myself wrote a syllabus uh, for one of the universities in maharashtra so you will see more and more people become becoming as, the, as a norm so costing wise it should not affect much you can have your own private blockchain on a cloud or you can access a global blockchain but at, over there just ensure that you choose something which is Uh, a cheaper one so that decision matters a lot yeah okay uh, in fact we have a lot of uh, yeah sir i uh, I'll, i'll try to cover them uh, yeah i'll try to cover the questions uh, mm-hmm. how can r and d institutions use digital ledger uh, please go through the research paper that i had just shown whenever the genomic data for example gene banks uh, that doc sunil and me were discussing wherever sensitive data needs to be shared across in a trusted manner that is where our institutions can use it how can we simplify interactions with stakeholders using blockchain now 
blockchain is a backend what you build on the uh, like any application that you see that's a front end so today blockchain is waiting for the front end and back end to become seamless in such a way that uh, operations should be like just using any other app and we have almost achieved that stage okay the qr codes uh, you should highlight this like this many startups are addressing bits and pieces are there any programs which integrate production processes quality certification nutrition data which are mostly asked yes so now what we are trying to do uh, with the qr codes is trying to make it more detailed and more meaningful so that that data itself has more uh, utility than just attracting customers because that is as i said that's where carbon credits esg compliance would also come into the place how far smart contracts benefit small and marginal farmers who are about 85% uh smart smart contracts are just if else statements if this happens then do this smart contracts come under blockchain technology now how much blockchain would benefit would depend again as i said in indonesia just uh, look at the project that they have done hara token hara token is the name a token is the name of the token and hara is the name of the company so i'm just writing it over here because over there all the small and holding farmers are um, existing and we need someone like uh, some partners on the indian uh, counterpart to match that what resources as i just said is there any disadvantages or side effects of using blockchain technique uh, currently the disadvantages that we mostly see are that uh, because it's new and everything that is being coded happens on the first time so it takes time to develop but that is the case with any new technology thank you gurinder sir how do you feel blockchain can address the problem of corruption without compromising data breach yes uh by mr sujay you are asking that blockchain how can it manage corruption data breaches and all i'll give an example uh, nhs was hacked if you remember nhs was, nhs is national health service uh, uk all their health data is centralized and digitized now they had an option to actually bring it on blockchain but they said no we don't want it without blockchain we are good then it was hacked and the people who hacked it asked for ransom in bitcoins so when i was in london i just uh, made a small observation in the parliament i said that if you had used blockchain technology to safeguard your digital records you would not be paying uh, uh, ransom using the same technology in bitcoin because it's the same technology completely different purposes but that is definitely doable and what will also happen is uh, there is a in fact 2018 ministry of health and family welfare released a uh, document a gr in which they are encouraging health records to go on board onto blockchain similarly i think personally most of the government data which is sensitive in nature should go on blockchain in any case which is what most countries are doing why yeah in india you must have heard the incidents like uh, the file is missing because the building caught fire and that's why the files also caught fire if that data was on blockchain you can't have a building fire to erase that data for example yeah can we trace contaminants in our food products through this technology uh, that is something which would need uh, others uh, so there is one concept in blockchain technology called the oracle problem what is the oracle problem oracle problem is when something from the physical world jumps into the digital world that bridge can be compromised so that bridge should be made of iot sensors third party auditors much more validations or maybe calculations to ensure that output is not more than input and so on so detecting contaminants is a part of the bridge once that information is stored it goes on blockchain now blockchain doesn't actually know whether the data it is coming is right or not it has only one thing it will not allow it to get changed or deleted so sometimes it acts as a deterrent for people to not do in bad data entry because the footsteps of their mistakes or their mischiefs will be recorded permanently over there uh, we'll take uh, the last question uh, of sujay rakshit <coughs> Okay. and uh, he is uh, asking about this crop insurance yeah. so he is asking the uh, algorithm used for addressing the crop health needs validation before uh, deploying uh, in a large scale is it happening it's happening in uh, africa in which uh, i think it's ifo international federation uh, uh, the, 
F A O of course uh, the uh, the food organization they are doing a pilot over there for crop securitization and insurance uh, using blockchain in africa so i just had one discussion with them but i don't know the details but they have gone pretty much ahead the only sad part is that these kind of pilots and support and uh, you, you, the different eco, ecosystem coming together sadly speaking it doesn't happen over here but the largest potential is in india itself in fact uh, i r i someone is um, mr vinay saigal has said that there is a grow indigo on a carbon credit and rolling 10000 acres definitely that we can do carbon credits on blockchain over there mr vinay saigal and also i'll just put in my personal contact details also over here okay. uh mr gorab uh, let us take one question from the q and a also yes 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 Please. in the uh, dr uh if dr bhagwan rajeshwari is asking can multiple student uh, study certificates of the students can be authenticated using this block uh, chain technology uh dr bhagwan i am just uh, because uh, dr bhagwan choudhary i don't I, I'm, i'm not sure if you are the same person but dr okay, you are a bhagwan so dr bhagwan choudhary is a professor at isb uh, indian school of business hyderabad and the coincidence is such that uh, uh, the question that you are asking is actually implementing it in uh, uh, isb school the multiple certificates of students being uh, authenticated on blockchain they is already doing it since 2 years so in fact um, there is this wonderful use case that happened there was a collector in uh, usmanabad uh, i don't remember the district so there are so many documents that come up that they they have stamps on it but all of them can be forged but what if there is just a qr code on it which is how your even uh, covid certificate works without the, the everything can be forged except the qr codes so when it comes to educational certificates government grs government orders land records everything should actually ideally go on blockchain so that forgery tampering becomes impossible yeah the certificates uh, if you see the digi lock Uh, if you put the certificates in the digi lock they are also authenticated certificates yes a digi locker uh, there was a discussion that was happening earlier with, within niti ayog that should digi locker also go on blockchain because what can also happen is once it goes on blockchain digi locker then it can also take uh, certificates of let's say from my college i am lucknow because if it's a decentralized platforms then different parties can come and attach to it currently digi locker is only limited in its scope for driving license passport aadhar and so on but then me as a entity have hundreds of certifications attached to it for example why would i give experience certificate to you when i can directly certify you on a blockchain platform that yes this person has actually worked for me and your digital avatar is actually created in such a manner that uh, your resume is organic uh, in fact it's not at all my idea this is an idea by the uh, italy's oldest university uh the university of bologna i'll just type type it here the dean of that university has done a beautiful ted talk by saying that if all of these different works certificates and experiences could be attached to the digital avatar of the person then that resume will have 100 times more meaning than just sending a pdf to you yeah uh so i think uh, that's all uh we have responded to most of the questions so uh, thank you very much uh, mr gorab and uh, mm-hmm. may i request uh, dr sunil rachak to uh, propose a vote of thanks please yes uh, thank you very much uh, thank you very much uh, speaker today speaker uh, mr gorab raghun somonshi and and everybody else who have participated uh Uh, Goro, this is uh, lunch time for all the people in Delhi and other places. You know, everybody who is attending classes, universities, and offices, they run in the morning. And you see that uh, in this platform right now, apart from other platforms where they are watching this one, and they are still one twenty to maintain. So people have a huge amount of interest. And I, I, I can tell you that only part of it is saturated today. People have more questions, more and more questions, and that is the success of a speaker that uh, you. you you ensure that people have more questions in their minds at the end of the uh, your talk and you have done success you have done it very very wonderfully 
and i'm sure everybody is pretty happy with uh, uh, this particular uh, uh, organizing this particular lecture uh, and this platform thank you very much uh, uh, in fact uh, 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 i just want to tell all my colleagues that because he spent little more time in explaining the fundamentals of the uh, of this particular subject so that we are all aware of what he, what he is going to speak later yeah. he has not uh, spent sufficient time on all the achievements that has been done uh, he can give at least one hour lecture on all the things that has been done with the uh, government of chatisgarh and perhaps others also they are really wonderful success stories really really wonderful success stories and then uh, we all can learn a lot from uh, how uh, bringing technology and domain experts and a perfect objective and a good policy support can make uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, such a change uh, means people can really observe from very far and uh, uh, from people from other countries have recognized that particular effort which has been mentioned in the beginning thank you very much uh, gaurav for uh, taking your <coughs> time and then explaining to all of us thank you thank I'm you sure, sir i am sure this thank is you. only the beginning i am sure this is only the beginning Uh, our students and and our uh, policy makers will be contacting you for various uh, let's say uh, collaborations in in future and that will be the um, success of this particular uh, organizing this lecture thank you very much and uh, we, uh, uh, yes uh, thank you uh, gaurav and uh, dr sunil for introducing mr gaurav to us to have this lecture and mr gaurav uh, because we have Uh, given a lot of concepts and other things our students are really uh, very eager to know all these things so we will find uh, many other opportunities uh, yes, to sir, have sir. Uh, your uh, views uh, and to have your uh, training programs uh, for the students benefit because blockchain technology is the one uh, which uh, i feel personally feel that our students should be at least exposed they should know whether they yes, are sir. going in any field but they have to have this concept so that uh, they can really think and uh, can contribute uh, to have the use of this block uh, chain technology in many fields whether some marketing supply chain or insurance wh whatever uh, they, they feel like hello But we have to prepare our uh, our uh, young generations for this no 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 disturbance ai app just tell me yes so uh, thank you very much yes. uh, thank, you, and, uh, thank, thank you sir and thank you sunil sir, sir. Thank, thank you, Gurwal sir. You, you, thank you. Thanks, everybody who has joined. All my best. Enjoy. Enjoy. Thank you. 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 Thank you.